Welcome back. This is probably the last problem I want to work on the concept of elevation of boiling point. Of course, in class, I would give you a couple more creative problems, but for the purpose of understanding what it really means when you, uh, when you talk about boiling point is, as I said in the previous problem, when we added lactic acid, oops, sorry, when we added lactic acid, okay, to water, we found, again, we're just interested in the value. It was 103.9 degrees Celsius, right? Now, we're going to use the exact same generic equation for the elevation of boiling point, which is Kb times M times I. Delta Tb is what we're asked to solve, and Kb is given to you, which is the boiling point constant water, which is 0.52. The molality, we don't know. We can find it, sure. I is Van Hoff factor. Now, we're dealing with sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is NaCl, right? And sodium is plus one, Cl is minus one. There's no other, there's not more of any of these, so we know I equals two, because there's one and one of each, right? So I is two. So we have to find the molality before we can actually solve the complete problem, right? So we have, let's switch color so we can do the calculations in a different color. So we have 96 grams of sodium chloride and sodium chloride's molar mass is 58 grams over one mole. And why are we doing it? Because we are trying to find the molality of the solution, right? And we have to find the moles of solute which we just did is 1.666 moles. Now, you see that in the previous problem, it was clearly in grams, so no one had any problem. But we're going to assume the density of water didn't change. So every milliliter is a gram. So 383 milliliter is 383 grams. So if we convert that to kilograms, you just have to assume that it's one milliliter is one gram, which we again have done some problems in 170 on this particular idea. So it'll be 0.383 kilograms. Now we can solve for molality, which is 1.66 moles over 0.383 kg, right? Divided by 0.383, which happens to be 4.32 m, okay? So now we know this value is 4.32 m, right? Now let's go ahead and solve the calculation, which is, it's just asking for the elevation of boiling point, which is 0.52 times 4.32 times uh, two, right? So let's solve that times two times 0.52, degree Celsius. Now in, in both cases, I mean, the previous one was cyclohexane, but even if you assume it's water, this one, water boils at 100 degrees, okay? And this one was 100, plus 4.49 degrees Celsius, which is 104.9 degrees Celsius. I mean, I did ass assume that to be water, okay? Even though there was technically cyclohexane. Forgive my assumption, but you know, it, it's not gonna hurt in any ways. If you compare this value right here to this value, what do you observe? The Van Hoff factor for lactic acid is one, whereas the Van Hoff factor for sodium chloride is two. So when Van Hoff factor increases, this value right here increases, which means when you add it to 100 degrees, it's gonna go up, right? Again, we're not technically comparing apples and apples. Yes, in the previous case, we did have cyclohexane instead of water, so you know this could be cyclohexane. But either way, 
it's not so much this value of 100, it's this value is clearly higher, right? This was 3.9 and here it's 4.49. So what's more important is, so say if I give you sodium chloride, that's it, this is the problem, we've solved it. So I give you calcium chloride and AlCl3 and as I said, here I equals two, here I equals three, here I equals four. All these are ionic compounds, right? So if Van Hoff factor increases, so if I increases, boiling point should increase. So if you take three beakers of water, equal amounts of water, say 100 mils, and you add sodium chloride, equal quantity of sodium chloride, equal quantity of calcium chloride, equal quantity of aluminum chloride to it, you're going to see that the one with the aluminum chloride would boil at the highest temperature, whereas the one with the sodium chloride boils at the lowest temperature because of this dissociation, right? Well, that's pretty much all I have to say on the concept of elevation of boiling point. Of course, um, I know how to tweak these problems and make a new version of it. So you will see that in class, but this is foundational of what you need to know. All right, so stay tuned for the concept of depression of freezing point.